I'd rather die than do this. But I have to tell you everything. Billy, come on, you're scaring me to death. I know, honey. And I'm scared, too. I'm so scared. <laughs> come on, now. If you think there's anything in this entire world I wouldn't forgive you for, you're crazy. I mean, especially today of all days, when I'm the happiest I've ever been, even with the thought of marrying you. Just you. let Come me on. tell you. Just let me tell you everything, please. All right. To begin with, I did something terrible with your books. My books? Nikki, I'm the one that bought them all. They weren't selling, so I bought every copy and I stored them in the warehouse. Oh, Kelly. I know I was wrong, honey. And I knew that if you had any idea what I was doing, you'd think that I didn't trust you to get through it yourself. <clears throat> sure, uh, that thought may well have occurred to me, yes. But I do trust you. Nikki, I have more faith in your strength than you know. But you had worked so hard at it and... The break-in in the apartment and all, I, I just, I couldn't stand it. How could I hold that against you? You loved me enough to do something that crazy. No, it's not all, there's more. Hi. Hi. I came early just in case Nick has any last minute instructions for the best man. Oh, well, he's off somewhere with Kelly. Oh, it's kind of cloudy out there. You think the weather's going to hold? Oh, I hope so. But if it doesn't, since we're having such a small wedding, it won't be a big production to move inside. It's just friends and, and family, except for Eden. She was just called back to Stanford. Oh, Kirk's doctor called her back there. Oh, well, I, I've heard sometimes it takes a while to find the right heart. Yes, and we're praying that he stays alive until there is a donor. Hey, everybody. If you see our groom, we can tell him the best man is here. Cruz, thank you for coming. Hope it wasn't a waste of your time. What? Well, between the weather and whatever's happening with Kelly, we might not even have a wedding today. Come on, give me a pulse. Give me a pulse, please. Oh, <laughs> Hurry! Call a doctor. The phone in here doesn't work. She needs help right away. Right away. Don't you understand me? Estás escuchándome. What are you yelling for? Get an ambulancia! Ambulancia! Por favor! Por favor! Rápido! I can give you help. I need to get a phone. A limo, let's go. All right, all right. Stop right there. And do not move. Mira, la sangre, sus manos. Kelly, you are torturing yourself over nothing. These are called acts of love. You love me. I do love you. But me. You were just trying to spare my feelings, that's all. It's not like you told a lie to protect yourself. It's different. You're too good. And I guess I can't expect you to overlook anything else. Especially since we've gone over it so much. Over what? What are you talking about? The books? No. I did sleep with Dylan. Oh, God, forgive me. I don't understand why I did it, but I did. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I had all those chances to tell you the truth. I can't defend myself. It happened at Santa Rosa that time, and I wish I could say that it was his fault or that he forced me, but he didn't, Nick. I'm just as much to blame for it. But I didn't think I could do something like that. Maybe I don't know myself. Stop enough. it, Kelly, please. Just stop it. Why? I don't know why I did it. No, I mean, why are you telling me this now? We're supposed to get married in an hour. One hour! Because I couldn't let you read me those vows, Nikki. 
I couldn't let you stand there in front of my family and talk about trust and honesty. And I didn't realize until now how wrong that would be. So what Dylan was telling me was the truth all along. It wasn't until later that he had to lie to, to protect your lies. Is that it? I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you right then. But I thought maybe I was easing my conscience by waiting. But I knew that I loved you, and I knew I didn't want to hurt you. Now why are you changing your mind now? Why have you decided to hurt me now, Kelly? I told you why. Because of the promises we were going to make today. No. That's not it. What? You wouldn't have blown this whole thing wide open an hour before our wedding unless you knew inside that you didn't want to marry me. That's not true! I want to be your wife. But I want to deserve it, Nikki. What am I supposed to say? I guess... what you feel. What if I told you right now that I want to forget the last five minutes just happened? What would you think? I don't think it's possible for you to forget it. You wouldn't trust it. And if I told you I forgave you, you wouldn't trust that either. You knew when you told me about Dylan, there's no way that we were going to get married. Didn't you? All I knew was that I had to tell you. Or I couldn't face you again. You knew you were closing a door. Probably forever. That's not... I didn't have any of this planned. I had no idea how you would respond. No, but you knew what wouldn't happen. You knew that when you told me this, we weren't going to turn around and walk down this aisle and pledge our eternal love in front of God and the people that we love. No, probably it wasn't, it wasn't a conscious thought. But when it came right down to it, Kelly, you knew you had to find a way not to marry me. I love you. And I can't expect you to believe that right now. You know something, Kelly? I think I could forgive you about what happened with Dylan. I think I did that a long time ago. But what I can't deal with is that you brought us up to this moment before pushing me away. I was just trying to be honest with you. Is that the price you pay? Nick. You're not going to ask me where I'm going, are you? I mean, you do know me. You know I can't stay. Brandon, still seeing? Still seeing the psychologist? Yeah. Santana and I are waiting for the go-ahead from the doctor before we tell him that we're married. We don't want to hit him with too much. I hope you do it pretty soon because I think it'll be good for him. I hope so. Dr. Mills says it shouldn't be too much longer. Cruz, it's, it's for you. Sounds like it's some police business. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. I'll see you. Yeah, she is. Uh, what's the address? We'll be right there. Courtney, there's been an accident involving your sister. Madeline? What's happened? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'd like you to go with me now and we can find out. Well, what kind of accident? I can't. I'll let you know when I get the details. We have to go right now. Wait, wait. Is there anything I can do? Not right now. Oh, my God. Come on. I got my car. It's all right. Right. How long do they think it's going to take? Well, no one knows. I mean, it depends on the heart recipient's age. and Well, there are a lot of factors. It can't be just any heart. I know that. If they're expecting to find one as cold and selfish as Kirk's heart, it'll take them forever. I don't think this is something we should be joking about, Aunt Gina. Do I look like I'm laughing? Kirk is my last chance of getting back in the good graces of the Capwells. He's the only way I can regain my son. I'm pulling for him harder than anyone. Hey, how you doing? Look, I have to go now. Uh, the wedding's about to start, and there are a lot of things I have to get done. Huh? So, Kelly and Nick are finally getting married, huh? It's a small wedding up in the gazebo, and I have to help serve at the reception. All right, well, you run along. But you be sure and tell me if you get any news about Kirk. I will. Hey, you got one of those for me? 
<laughs> you know what I hate even more than your constant threats? No, what do you hate, Gina? You're drooling over my niece. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying you should just stop with your pathetic come on to leave her the hell alone. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. If you do not have an attorney, we will appoint one for you. Hey, Cruz, you know this guy? Yes, I do. What happened? I wish I knew. I, I... Oh, my God. That's not Madeline, is it? By the time we got here, it was too late. This isn't happening. No, I don't believe it. I don't it. think you want to do that. No, if that's my sister, I've got to see Cruz. Cargo, I think you should sit down. No, I don't want to sit down. I want to know what happened. I want to do it. What happened to my sister? I found her here. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Why are they arresting you? Well, that's a question I wanted to ask Cruz. You hated her. Oh, no, no, Courtney, no, look, you got to believe me here. How could you? I swear to God, I didn't touch her. I didn't lay a hand Girl, on her. Mike, I not swear to God. to get into this until we get you a lawyer. Hey, I don't need a lawyer, man. I, I got nothing to hide here. Good. <laughs> better sit down. I think it's important to sit down for a second. Chris, was anybody else around when they found the body? Anybody see anything, hear anything? Motel manager and the maid. The maid found him with the body. Let me see if I can find them. <laughs> She saw you and me when by the body. Estás segura de este es el mismo hombre? Sí, señor. Es cuatro indicaciones de un esfuerzo, un ataque. You mandé a Clara y Clara entró. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. They may have heard a struggle. They may have heard one, but it wasn't me. I swear to God, whatever happened happened before I even got here. Cruz. Okay, okay. Cruz, look at me. Okay. I couldn't have done this. Look, I, I, how could I? That's just. I got them as my story. I'm afraid we're going to have to take you downtown anyway, buddy, till we find out who did. I'm sorry, man. I'll get there as soon as I can, and everything will be all right. Oh, sure it will. Hey! Get your hands off me, girl! Courtney, as God is my witness, I Who didn't... Who are you, anyway? Huh? Pretending to be one person, and then... And then killing my sister. No, girl, stop! What kind of animal could do this? Get him out of here. Courtney. Oh, Maddie! Courtney. I'm sorry, Jonah. She was alive when they called. I thought we could get her in time. Who's? Yeah. I think I've got a pulse. For the love of heaven, Vince, you told me she was gone. Well, I checked the get on the radio and get an ambulance here now. I told you already. You okay. You said enough already. Come on. Uh, Bob, you're a good lawyer. The public defender's office does not do better, but you're working too hard right now. We're going to go through this again on tape. Now, Pearl, this was not the first time you drove Madeline to the motel. No, it was not. How many other times? Uh, eight, maybe nine times. Sometimes, sometimes twice a day she did. Always the same address. Always the same address. Same time of day. Sure, no, no, lots of different times. But you never saw her meet anyone. Uh, no, no, she left the limo alone, she came back alone, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You never talked about who she might be meeting? Oh, well, sure, I asked her, but you, you, you know, you know me, I butt in, but she wanted, to, uh, she wasn't very talkative about the With you thing. or with anyone else? Uh, w with me. So when did this tension between the two of you start? Look, look, I don't like passing judgment on a woman who is not here to defend herself, but with Madeline, there are two basic kinds of people, her kind and untouchables, right? I don't need to tell you what category she put me in, and she did it the first time, the very first time she ever laid eyes on me. Okay, so from the very beginning, there was bad blood between the two of you. Okay. You want to play cop? I'm going to play my part, too. I don't have to answer any more questions, do I? Correct. I hope you don't mind. I won't wait until my attorney gets here. In a few seconds, she ought to be here. Wait a second, for all I want is the truth. That's all I want. I am not telling you another word until Julia gets here. You hear me? Okay. You heard me, Mr. Policeman. Good. Look, I'm going to check the front desk, okay? Uh, thank you. I got here 
as soon as I could. You said bail? 200,000. What? 200 grand? Well, that's great. I'm uh, a celebrity. Siran, Siran. Ah, uh, Christian, I can't turn like this. Sure. Okay, okay. Just relax. Sit down. I want to help you, Pearl. I want to help you, but you have to be 100% honest with me. Oh, come on, woman. I did not attack that lady. I didn't lay a hand on her. I didn't touch her. That is the God's honest truth, no. I swear. I mean, honest about everything, not just today. Well, what do you mean? I don't understand. I cannot defend someone that I don't know, Pearl. I want your name, where you're from. I want everything about you that you didn't tell me before. No holding back. Oh, no. I don't see how that is relevant to this case, Miss Wayne. Pearl, when charges are this serious against you, your whole life becomes relevant. I'm sorry, that's, that's just the way it is. And now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't think that you know me any better just because you know, you think you know that my name on a birth certificate that somebody else's idea of what my name is. Do you realize what you're doing? Do you know that every time you resist a simple question, you look like you have something to hide? This is not going to impress the jury. Wait a minute. It's not my idea to impress the jury. They're supposed to decide whether or not I am guilty or innocent. Not to decide how I'm supposed to live my life. Don't you understand that? All right, listen. You are going to be researched up one side and down the other by the prosecution. And you're very naive if you think that none of this is going to come out. Okay. If it comes out. If it comes out. Fine. Fine. And I find out my client's true identity in the middle of the courtroom. You listen to me. Turn around and listen to me, Pearl. I like you. What? I even like your individuality. But if you can't see that the rules have changed, if you cannot respect the fact that as your attorney, I have the right and I need to know everything about you, then I'm going to walk right out of this room when you find yourself another attorney. I mean it. The game is over. Now, you can complain all you want uh, about your privacy and, 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 and the legal system, but your privacy is a luxury that you cannot afford now, Pearl. A woman was brutally attacked. She is probably dead, and you were there. You were right there in the room. Now, you put that up against your sacred privacy, and you tell me what really counts. Hey, what I thought you guys were going to be at the hospital for what? The doctor sent us home. There was no point in staying. But did, Dad, I thought she had, there was a chance that she was going to make it. Technically, there were still some uh, body functions, but the brain did it. some tests. There was no activity there, nothing. Haley, would you get Miss uh, Capel a glass of water, please? I'm so sorry, Courtney. I... Honey, would you like some tea, maybe? Something, something strong in the drink? No. No, I need to call David. I can make a call for you if you don't feel up to it. No, um, I guess I'll call him in New York. It's my brother-in-law, and I should do that. Well, you were just going to sit down and relax now. Why don't you? I'll make the phone call. It's just terrible here. Have some water. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. But it really is, isn't it? It's true. Oh, Mr. Kemp is right. You need to rest. Give yourself some time. Would you please have him call his number when he returns? It's very urgent. C.C. Capo. Yes, I'm his wife's uncle. Thank you. Courtney, he was out, but I left that number. He'll call back. Ted, you keep an eye on her. I've got to call our guests and postpone the wedding. Can I get you anything? How about if we take you upstairs and go lie down? No. Yeah. No, Ted. Ted, I want to use your car. Oh, I, I don't think that's no, a good please, idea. No, please, Ted. Right? It's very important. I didn't think you would tell him. You said I should. I know, but when you waited so long. You know, Nick said I wanted this to happen, Mom. What does that mean? He said I'd know how he'd react, and that this was my way of getting out. Is there any truth to that? Maybe. I don't know, I hope not. You know, how can I be so out of touch with myself? Come here, baby. Oh. 
did you know it would turn out this way? Oh, no, no. I hoped it wouldn't. You know, I still feel guilty. I guess telling the truth doesn't take that away. Kelly, listen to me. I think if you give it time, you and no. Nick... No. Nick will never feel the same way about me. Never. You know, this morning, everybody was looking up at the sky. They were looking for rain, wondering if we were going to postpone. At least nobody will have to wonder anymore. And where have you been? The library. The what? You heard me. I didn't know you knew where the library was. I was just doing a little research. Oh, yeah, and what? Heart transplants. I didn't realize how many they do these days. Of course, there's still a lot of risks involved, but under the right conditions. And what are the right conditions? Well, the person who receives the heart has to be under 50. Uh -huh. Kirk certainly qualifies there. And the donor has to be under 40, and the death had to have been caused by some kind of trauma to the brain. It doesn't make you a little sick to talk about this stuff. I think it's very interesting to learn about how the body works. Oh, yeah, me too. That's why I like to stay in shape, so my body can work real good. <laughs> Just keep it covered when my niece is around. Are you going to level with me, Pearl, or do I drop the case? Julia... It's not a game with me, okay? I got reasons don't for living you, like I do. Don't matter anymore, Pearl. Don't you understand? They matter to me. Not this time. Okay, if I come back in now. Yeah, sure, come on in. Our business is finished, see? Are we? Yeah. Ask me whatever you want. You're satisfied that your client's rights will not be jeopardized? I'm not her client no more. What? Man, yeah, she don't want to take my case, so... I'm on my own. Hmm? So what? What do I care? I got nothing to be scared of. The way I look at it, nobody's going to stick me in the clinker for something I didn't do, right? I hope not. But if they wanted to, you're not making it too tough. What's that? Hey, you are not my lawyer anymore, so what do you care? What is that? This is a police report involving an incident with Madeline, where you didn't mention it to me, by the way, wherein you were accused of theft. You remember that? Oh, accused? So big deal. It all blew over. She tried to plant a necklace in my pocket. She tried to set me up to make it look like I stole a necklace. Now, why would she do a thing like that? So, she could get me fired by the big man, CC, but the cops, before they came, I figured out what they were up to, okay? And that necklace was right back where it started from. Madeline wanted to get you fired. Of course! But from the beginning... Courtney. She was on my side, yeah. She was the one responsible for me getting hired in the first place. She wouldn't let her sister get away with nothing. Did they argue about it? Sure they argued about I me. Mean, sometimes. Oh, that's great. That's two more motives. That's just what you need. Well, what do you mean two more motives? What are you talking it's about? It's gonna look like Madeline. You wanted Madeline dead because of you. you want to keep your job and because and, and of your girlfriend. Courtney's not my girlfriend. Don't worry, you the part, Pearl. Don't. You're gonna hang yourself, okay? Just don't answer any more questions until you get another lawyer. You're serious about not taking this case? Yeah. I don't understand that. Okay. It's a very long story. At least you didn't drop me in the middle of the case like you did with that guy in Phoenix. Now you're... Oh. I don't know what's going on between you two, but until another lawyer gets here, I'd like you to stick around. I have some more questions to ask him. I'd like to do them in the presence of counsel. Go ahead. Why were you in the bungalow in the first place? Why weren't you in your car waiting as usual? Okay, she was late. It was my day off. I wasn't even supposed to be working there. I was getting very tired of waiting for this lady. So I go to try to find out what she's up to. Did you knock? Did I knock? Of course I knocked. There was no answer. The door wasn't even locked. It wasn't even all the way closed. So what do I do? I push it open. And I see it. I see a lie in there. I see the blood. I see the hammer. I push it out of the way. And... Uh, I swear to God, I was scared to death, Cruzy. Why didn't you call for help, bro? Well, I called, I, I, called, I called, that's the first thing I did. I got right on the phone, but it was disconnected. The plug was pulled right out of the wall. So what do I do? I, I remembered there is a phone in the limousine. Yes, a phone, and, and I ran right out to the limousine. 
So you were on the phone when the manager came up to you at the limousine? Well, of course I was. I had the receiver right here in my right hand. Well, he didn't see it. Well, then the man is blind because I was in the middle of dialing 911. Medical emergency. 911. What's the matter? You didn't sound like yourself for a minute there, Pearl. Maybe you sounded just like yourself, Pearl. Oh, come on. What are you, what are you two talking Drop about? Drop it, Pearl. Drop the accent. Drop the whole routine. Oh, I see. I gotta talk a certain way. You're starting in on my voice now, attacking my credibility on that level? What difference does it make whether I have an accent or no accent? Oh, all the difference in the world. I don't know when you're going to realize that. A few months back, I did something very foolish. I slept with Nick's brother. You slept with Dylan? Good grief, Kelly's not even fit to be in the same room with you. He's a poor excuse for a man. He's I know that, and I can't explain it. What are you trying to do, get back at Nick or something? You have an argument? Well, what? Daddy, I lost control. I hate myself for it, but it happened. I don't believe I'm hearing this, especially from you. Well, maybe I'm more human than you realized. No, maybe you're more like your mother than I realized. Oh, Daddy, stop it. This is my mistake. Leave her out of it. Haven't you learned anything about what she went through? Daddy, tell me something. Why is what she did or what I've done so completely different from you? You gonna stand here and make me believe that you didn't lie once in your life to get what you wanted? Or that you didn't use somebody in a bad way or make an error in judgment that you regretted? All right. I'm sorry, honey. I'm wrong. I'm sorry, baby. I know what you're going through. I'm... You have no idea what I'm going through. All you know is that I deserve it. And I can't argue with you there. Kelly, where are you? Kelly! I really don't think I want to talk about it anymore, Ted. I'm not asking you to. Hey, come here. I just want to say I'm sorry. I told Daddy. Because he didn't take it too well. How else is he supposed to take it? You know, I can't, I can't expect everybody else to understand what I can't understand. Hey, come on, Kelly, I thought you, thought you and Nick really loved each other, huh? I do love him. Or maybe it, maybe I don't even know what love is. Maybe I never have. No, that is not true. Kelly, you are one of the most loving people in this family. Do you think that, Ted? Really? Hey, I know that. I've always trusted you. Hey, come on. You've ne you listen. You've you've never let me down. Yeah. Well, I let Nick down, didn't I? And I let myself down. And Daddy. And everybody that put that way. Right. Well, it's quite a story. Poor sister. Were they close? Yeah, I really think so. I, I mean, Madeline may have been hard to deal with, but Courtney knew how to handle her. She loved her. She's really going to miss her. Yeah, but from what you said, it's not all over yet. I mean, she's not gone. She may pull out of it. No, Gina, Mr. Kappel said that the doctors took tests of her brain functions, and there's really no hope. I mean, if you're brain dead, you're clinically dead, even if you're breathing. She's still breathing. It means her heart is still beating. Haley. What? This is incredible. I, I mean, it was like it was meant to be. What? Well, think about it. Madeline could be the donor for Kirk's heart. Oh, I, well, I wonder. I, I have nothing to wonder about. I was researching it. And she's ideal. How old is she? In her 30s, I guess. That's perfect. Of course, I'd have to match up the blood and the tissue, but... Well, otherwise, it's going to work out. It has to. Has anyone else thought of it? Oh, no. I'm sure it's way too soon for anyone to even consider it. Well, you're going to have to go back there and put the idea in their mind. You talk to, talk to Ted. Make some kind of suggestion. There's no time to waste. Who am I to suggest something like that? <sighs> suggest what? Saving somebody's life? I'm sure they'll forgive you for that. In the meantime, I'm going to go to Stanford. I'm going to seek her. I'm going to tell them not to give up hope. The help is on the way. Don't tell anybody about what I'm doing. I'm still a secret. Uh, 
Uh, excuse me. I was here earlier. I'm the sister of the woman who was hurt. I really don't know why I came back, except maybe to convince myself that it's all real. Do you mind if I come in? Sure. As long as you don't touch anything, okay? Okay. Well, thank you. Don't do that. Anything in this room is considered evidence. Right. I'm sorry. I guess I just wasn't thinking. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Thanks for letting me stop that. I tell you, pal. That wasn't your smartest move. Hey, hey, now, she is the one that made the move. Not me. Julia is a good lawyer. She's smart, and she'll fight dirty if she has to. You could trust her with anything. For that matter, you could trust me, too. It's not that easy, Cruz, is it? Uh -huh. Apparently not. I don't suppose you have any idea we're going to come up with $200,000 bail? I do, as a matter of fact. Uh, could I have a little bit of private time here, too? Make a phone call. Is that allowed? Sure, Pearl. I'll be right outside. <sighs> yes. I would like to speak with the ambassador, please. Yes, of course I'll wait. No, I can't, I, I can't do this. I cannot. Uh, excuse me, but I thought I was getting a little private time here. Too. As long as you don't want another good news, then. Good news? Bail's been posted. Why? The, oh, the whole thing. The donor wishes to remain anonymous. And don't get difficult and try to find out who it is. No, no. I'm not going to be difficult about anything except getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly told you everything? Yes. Probably wishes she hadn't, but she did. I don't know how to comfort her. I don't know the words to use. Well, at least you try to comfort her. My first instinct was to accuse her, to chastise her. Couldn't stop myself before it was too damn late. You never do that with the children. Never. You treat them as people, as if they have lives. Probably why they always come to you first. They don't always. Oh, yes, they do. They always. Because I always interfere. I always judge too quick. It's probably why they're so damn unhappy. Cece, do you really think they're all unhappy? No, Eden is happy, right? She tries to be. She seems like she has everything. But there's a big void in her life. Had something else. He's... Lashing out against authority, but we have an understanding between the two of us now. That Kelly's destroying a life that could make her very complete. And here I am making it worse for her than it already is. I have a theory about that. Do I want to hear it? It's not easy for you to hear about what Kelly's going through, making bad decisions about men, trying to cover her tracks. It's the kind of thing that you hate. It's the kind of thing that you're trying to forget. And I don't blame you for making that connection. But you have to remember one thing, Cece, that even though she may have made the same mistakes as I, she had the courage to admit it. I didn't. She did show a lot of courage, didn't she? You bet she did. She went to Nick and told him everything she told him the truth, even though she knew that she might have to give him up. I was very selfish with my love for you. I chose to live with a horrible lie. As long as I can keep you. She, uh, she did what she thought was right in telling him, didn't she? She has tremendous strength, more strength than she even knows. I hope I have a chance to tell her before it's too late. Most things in life aren't too late, Cece. You just have to be willing to try again.
there's something you need to know. Please, Kelly, no more. Nick, I thought about what you said. That I was looking for a way out. Well, maybe I was, but I wanted to tell you that it wasn't because of Dylan or because of the lies. I think it goes much deeper than that. Maybe the first time you fell in love with me was in the ghost town. I had no past. I had no self. I had no idea who I was. And when I got all of that back, I ran away from you, remember? I ran away because I thought that you'd loved someone that didn't exist, somebody that I couldn't live up to. But you didn't give up, and you were so patient with me. And after a while, I thought, and I tried to believe that maybe you could love me for myself. But I think the problem was I didn't believe it. And I kept thinking that you were putting me on a pedestal and that if you found out who I really was, you would be disillusioned. And, and then I had the mistake with Dylan. And the feeling was that much stronger. And a voice said to me that you couldn't love the Kelly who could do such a thing or the Kelly who was so confused and so frightened. And that was the Kelly I was hiding from. Why are you telling me this? Because I don't want you to question yourself. I don't want you ever to wonder what you did that drove me away because it wasn't you, Nikki. It was me. And it still is me. Because, honey, you gave me everything a person could give anybody. Well, you gave me something, too, Kelly. I mean, it wasn't so long ago. That I didn't think I had a reason to live. And it was you. Don't say that. Please go. It's the kindest thing you can do right now. Just go. You, you were the one that set up my, my bail. Yes. But why? I don't understand. A little while ago in the bungalow, you were, you were dead set against me. What happened? I'm sorry. Oh. Well, you don't have to be sorry for nothing. It's me that's sorry. I'm so sorry. I, why did this have to happen? I, I don't know what to say to you. You know, when I was seven, I had to get my tonsils out. And Madeline wasn't going to let me go through it alone. So she had my parents set up a bed for her in my hospital room. And on the day that I got out of surgery, I was too sore to eat ice cream. So she read to me all day. Thumbelina and the Silver Swan. Mm -hmm all my favorite stories. And then the day that I could eat ice cream, they brought me a bowl of vanilla and she had them take it back. And she said, after all this child has been through, can't you at least bring her her favorite flavor? And the nurses had to laugh because Madeline was just a kid herself. I'll bet you, I'll bet you got the chocolate though, didn't you? That I did. Oh, Pearl. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm uh, thank you for setting that bail. You, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, yes, I should have. 
I couldn't let them keep you in here for something that you didn't do. Wait a minute. How are you so sure that I didn't do that? I mean, half the DA's office is ready to start furnishing myself, and you're standing here telling me that I'm innocent. What? I've never been more sure of anything in my life. You didn't do it, Pearl. I see. Well, you must know who did. I know it was a terrible shot, David. I wish there was a way I could soften the blow for you. I'd advise you to go straight to the hospital from the airport. The doctors need to speak to you about what should be done. I'll have a car waiting for you. Oh, please, please. I only wish I could do more. We'll see you in a few hours then. Yes. I mean, if the doctors feel that there is no hope, I... Well, I couldn't help but think. No, 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 you're right. I, I mean, this would be the way to make something positive out of all this. D Dad. Yes, Dad. Yeah, have the doctors said what's going to happen with Madeline? I, I mean, if they cannot keep her alive, have they thought about how they could use her body to help somebody else out? I mean, Dad, she would be the, the, the perfect donor that Kirk is looking for. Funny that you mention that. Because one of the doctors did mention that when the time came, they would like to talk about the possibility of using viable organs. It's not up to us, though. No, of course not. The husband's on his way once he gets here. It uh, will be strictly up to him.